What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we are here at the Nerd Castle with the next episode of Mountain Blade Warband. In the previous episode, we had conquered ourselves a new castle, and so now we are back at court trying to give that thing away. Trying to make sure that everybody stays happy. So from what I can tell, Barans and I believe Count Clargus are the two. I talked to almost every single one of my vassals and I said, you know what, who deserves the castle? Almost everybody said Clargus, so I'm going to guess that Clargus is probably where I should go with some of this. There are so many lords here right now. God, our house is crowded. Will you bums get the hell out of here? Just eating all my food, making every- This is why we never have any of the good popcorn left. And frankly, I'm looking right at you, Lethwin. Lethwin is always leaving the bread out. He never closes it with the little twisty tie thing. Like, how hard is that? How hard is that, Lethwin? To when you get the bread out, put it back on the cabinet with the little twisty tie thing. Don't spin it around with a bunch of air still in it and then just fold it up underneath. Please don't do that. Bread is expensive. This is Calradia. We don't have a Safeway or anything around here. We don't have an Asda. Let's go ahead. I had to make that. I had to make that make sense for everybody. Safeway, and then I went straight to Asda, and it's all good. Let's talk to Deshavi. We're not going to be taking on any lords anytime soon. Do we have anything? Okay, everybody's getting along, which is good. I want to... we got to grant a vassal of Fife, and so we're going to be giving away Beluga. And Beluga is going to go to... Clargus. That worked out okay, and so that made Barans happy, and that made Rolf happy. Made Clary okay, so it made him really happy, and I didn't have time to read the rest of it. So let me drop this for just a second, and we'll take a look at our message. I hate it when it scrolls too f like when I don't want the logs around. It's there we go, and so we went with so basically you can see a bunch of people were supporting Clargus on this. And then Lazalit and Stamar were not down. I may marry Lazalit, by the way. I've been looking. He's got. I like the cut of his jib. I like the cut of his jibs. Kind of man that I could love. I mean, I don't go like that, but if I had to choose a man, I think I would choose one who is very manly. You know, he can handle his business. Hairy arms and all that fun stuff. And this is getting kind of weird and Freudian, so I'm going to back away right now. I feel like I'm making everybody else strangely awkward, even though I may not be. I don't know. I think it's funny, but whatever. We're going to go with Deshavi. And I think what we'll do now is we will give Udiniad to somebody. Somebody was supporting Metheld. I think it was Lazalit and somebody else that were supporting Metheld. So let me give that to Metheld. Ooh, and Plyce is not down with that. What does Plyce have right now? I do wish that there was like a list of places. Somebody supported her. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention to the... We'll give it to Metheld anyways. She's been having a lot of trouble like kind of wrangling up troops though, which is... She's never been that useful, which is why I always kind of stand away from giving her more stuff. I think what we can do is, let's take a look at our reports here. A lot of people are kind of grumpy with us, but I'm not going to kick them out. Plice, I would rather take another lord. I need to find a list of the lords who really respect you based on honor and they don't lose reputation when you give out lands because there are a specific list of lords. But anyways, let's marry Lazalit right now. We'll get that underway. And so we need to say, I wish to ask you something. Actually, no. Well, that... I need to look into the long-term effects of this. We'll wait on that one until next episode. I'm going to go ahead and do a little Google Foo and figure out. Because the thing that I'm worried about is maybe it'll incorporate all his lands into mine now. And then I'll have to take care of them. And I know he's got like castles and things. And I don't feel like managing garrisons. So we'll see what happens right there. The other castle that I was really kind of interested in taking at the moment was going to be Jerb. Which would give us a really, really strong central ribbon running. I mean, we've got a huge kingdom right now. We are straight riding out on Calradia. There's definitely, even the larger factions now should probably be a little bit worried about us. We've got ourselves three capitals. We've got more castles than I can count. Okay, well, more castles than I can count on one hand, which is about as far as my counting goes in most cases anyways. And so I think with where we're at right now, I may assemble the army one more time and we may go after Jerb and see if we can take Mazen as well. After which point we may contact Vagiers and say, listen, we can stop this right now. Like this doesn't have to go any further. I mean, this could end right this second. This could end right this moment. And you could walk away feeling mighty fine about yourself. It's only you that's in the way here. And so once we have that awkward little conversation, it's kind of like that I found this in your room conversation that your parents had with you when you were a kid. And you were like, that's not mine. No, they're like, uh, it's under your bed. And I'm like, uh, Josh left it here. <laughs> and you don't even know anybody named Josh. They're like, who's Josh? I'm like, uh, what's Josh's dad's phone number? Uh, Josh doesn't, uh... <laughs> I had the worst ex I look back and my excuses when I was younger were just like the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. They were really bad. Oh, there's a ransom broker here right now. Well, maybe I should make use of that. Let's go ahead and sell off some of these guys that are just sitting around down in our barracks. 
because we do have quite a lot of people that are awaiting their sale, which is not the nicest thing to say in modern times, but you know what, this is medieval times, so I guess selling people is semi-okay by cultural standards at this time period. I mean, it's probably not going to make you super popular. Watch that money flow. There it goes. I mean, we don't really need it. We're so rich at this point that it's like, whatever. I would love to see a readout of how much money, like, every king has, but... I don't actually think the other kings have money. I think they just spawn units for themselves. I doubt that they're even part of that mechanic. So now this place is no longer housing a million inmates. We've got a little bit of extra space. Why would you keep your beef on the wall right there? Is that what they did in medieval times? They just hung it from the wall in the tavern? I don't know. It doesn't seem very sanitary. And you know that bread up there has got to be just stale as hell. There's no way that bread is... Is that cheese or is that... I think it's bread. It's definitely bread. So anyways, how come we can't buy white pumpkins? I always tried when I was a little kid. I liked the way the white pumpkins looked on Halloween. So when we would have Halloween, I would always try and get the white pumpkins. Because I liked when you put a candle inside of them. It seemed like they kind of glowed. Like aesthetically, it was pleasing. Oh, I needed to do something right here. before I... I'm getting sidetracked. I'm getting 100% sidetracked. Let me talk to the ransom broker. We will say, let me see your purse. Because I would like to see the manufacturer so that I might buy one for myself. If indeed your purse is fetching, sir. If I find your purse to be aesthetically pleasing, then indeed, I shall purchase one alike it. And also, I wish to sell you some stuff. And so, I wanted to go to the Garrison, where we will upgrade some of our units. Not very many of them. I mean, we've got so many random people to be running around upgrading right now, that it's almost a little bit daunting. Almost a little bit daunting. It's a little terrifying. I don't remember what, I came down here for something, and I can't recall what it was. I needed something specifically out of the Garrison. And my brain is failing me at the moment. I'm going to drop off anything that's top tier, though, just like we did before. And everything that isn't top tier can stay with us because it'll get upgraded and dropped off into garrison anyways. And then we'll take these warriors right here, I think, and see if we can't level up a few more of them because we lost a lot of Huskarls in our last battle. 330 men hanging out at Ikemer. And I think it might be okay right now. Let's just go ahead and patrol the kingdom. I think that's the thing that I'm going to do. Let's just make sure that Vagirs isn't doing anything crafty right this second. And once we've done that... We're being sequestered still, which is no fun. I don't like losing money, but once we do that... Let's go to Qdan, actually, and let's see what kind of gear we can buy. I wanted to go shopping for new gear in this episode, and I think that's what I'll do. I've got so much money at this point that I can basically buy anything that I want. Lordly Serenade Armor, nah. Core Bully, nah. Nah, the 9 right there is pretty good. I'll buy those. And so now we have Vanbrises. We're looking a little bit better. The Winged Great Helmet is better than what we have, but I prefer to find like a lordly version or a thick version. So there's 5 grand gone. And then we'll swing on over to Kura because it's an iron working city and they may have some pretty good gear over here. The Kingdom of Vagars offers you peace. Hell yeah, we accept peace. So we're going to go ahead and enter a period of peace right now. And this is one of those times where I typically just bypass the next two or three weeks in the episode. We've got about, eh, we'll go 17 minutes left into this episode. But what I tend to do whenever we're at a period of peace because nothing interesting is happening is I just kind of ride around and I handle all of my kind of paperwork. Just handle the bureaucracy of running a kingdom. And it'll work out, in general, that seems to work out pretty well. It keeps you guys from having to suffer through... You know, five episodes of me riding around in circles fighting bandits and leveling up my soldiers for the next campaign season. And then simultaneously, it also allows you to jump just kind of from campaign to campaign and make sure that everything is being orchestrated the way that it needs to. Not really interested in any of that. We'll go to the armor merchant. Let's see what he's got. A thick coat of plates. It's only two armor better than what I have. I would rather actually have a plate mail suit if I'm trying to upgrade right now. Those boots are not that much better than what I have. I don't like the veiled helmets. They look weird. I do wish that there were just appearance slots, like you could just equip things and you would appear like a certain way, but not in the game right now. So we're going to ride around. Let's go back up to Vercheg and we'll see what they have. Since we're all at peace right now, we don't have to worry about anything terrible happening within the confines of our kingdom. We don't have any evil lords with us right now that just lose reputation from time to time. So all things considered, we're in a period of relative peace. I think the next person we'll probably go to war with, I can almost guarantee you, we want to be careful about who we squabble with right now. For the main reason that Vagirs is coming back. We've taken so much of Vagirs land that there is simply no way that Vagirs is not going to declare on us in the near future. There's probably no way 
that the Kurgits are not going to declare Austin in the, in the near future either, although that would be a tremendous bout of folly on their side, just based on the fact that they only have two castles left, and we are going to wipe them out so swiftly and so nastily if they try anything like that, that, well, my, my goal, I mean, they've got a lot of lords right now, and so I'm of two minds about the situation. On one hand, they do have a lot of lords right now for, like, how little land they have, but on the other side... They only have two castles left, so if I could rush and wipe out those castles before they conquer anything else, then I do feel... God, they got nothing here either. I do feel as though we could eliminate the faction altogether, and then they'll become another red faction, just kind of random lordless people riding around. I don't know what happens. I think the king just becomes a generic lord at which point, and I would probably try and recruit him because his massive army seems as though it would be really, really useful for me. There's no... I thought maybe there'd be a tournament going here right now, but it doesn't look like there is. That's unfortunate. Anyways, I'm about to make a cut right now because I, unfortunately, well, very important phone calls being what they are, it's ringing and I don't feel like getting yelled at today, so I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back here at the Nerd Castle. I'm sorry about that. I really, really try not to interrupt episodes because I find it to be incredibly unprofessional. I don't like it when my favorite LPers do it either. I mean, I don't complain. Like, important stuff comes up mid... And this is just like YouTube life versus real life, and it's one of those things where, well, sometimes you gotta handle real life stuff. But anyways, we're back now. Everything's okay. We're gonna continue as we were going before. We're trying to buy armor, as I recall. And so there's some lordly plate boots. That's gonna get me up to 39. They cost me 40 grand. Woo! -hoo -hoo. Them some expensive shoes right there. Nikes ain't got nothing on that. There's some thick banded armor, so we'll take the lordly plate boots. That's gonna put me down 40 G's. We'll keep those boots to give to somebody else. As of right now, we've upgraded our gloves and our boots. And our leg armor going up by plus 9 is actually a really, really good thing for us. That's going to make us quite a bit more resilient on horseback. Because a lot of the blows that you take from horseback from infantrymen are to your legs. And so as long as your leg armor is looking okay, you tend to be alright. There's 30 more Gs gone. God, I'm going to cry if we lose. If we lose Qdan right after this, I'm just going to be like, You're, you've are you got to be kidding me. Because that's my main... That's my main base for all of my cash. I get like 14,000 dinars from there every single week. The next town over. Let's see if they have anything for us here. They have battered plate armor. I'm not really interested in that. They have a thick great helmet, but it's not that much better. You gotta get a winged helmet is what we're actually looking for. Yeah, nothing here is gonna be useful for us. So we'll head on to the next location. I think the next place that I want to hit is, we'll go down to Proven. They tend to have like plate mail and stuff around here because as I understand it, Proven is supposed to be, what is this, oh, I'm sorry, the Swadian areas are supposed to be French from how I understand, at least that's what people have told me. And so, I'm going to go to, they've got battered, why is all of your armor battered? And they were like, well, we've been getting our asses kicked, man. All the armor around here, probably pretty beat up at this point. You don't have to be so indignant about it. Sell me better goods. I mean, the the word good is in the word goods, and you're selling me bads right now. I don't want bads, I want goods. We've got thick male boots, still nothing. The core bully can sometimes be really good if you get a lordly virgin. Nope, nothing there either, so we're gonna keep on running down to Ook's Call, possibly. Who Ook's is? I don't know. Apparently at some point he gave a call, and then he got himself a city named after him. Thin, or I'm sorry, thick Mameluke male. Not really looking that sexy to me. I don't like the Mameluke male. Plate male is a little bit better, but I'd rather find a lordly suit of it. Or a suit of it that's thick. So I've got a lot of money to throw around, so I would rather just do my final upgrading right this second. That's what it's going to look like. I don't like the way it looks on characters, by the way. The plate male, I, I feel like it looks ugly. My favorite is this right here, the coat of plates. And then I also like the core bully. So if we can find one of those, I'll be a lot happier just based on aesthetics. I'm one of those people that when I play MMOs, if my character looks ugly, I just stop playing. I can't stand it. Like, all the armor has to look cool. And so that gives you a little glimpse into my mind. So don't go crazy. Don't look into the storm for too long. But, I mean, that's how it works as I kind of rationalize things. Nothing here, either. The armor supply as of right now is quite poor. Luckily, we've got loads of food to keep our troops happy while we hike all over the landmass, so they shouldn't be too grumpy with us. We've got a core bully right there. Nope, still nothing here, either. Wow, kind of a bad run right now. Typically, when I want to buy the top-tier armor in the game, I don't have too much trouble doing it. What I do like about some of the mods, we'll talk about that while we ride around, and so, for example, at Floris, when you play in tournaments, every time you win a tournament, you get a piece of gear that's just, like, ridiculously better. Like, by comparison, if you wanted to put in Diablo terms, like, the stuff you could buy from the store is, like, a yellow. The stuff you get in Floris when you win tournaments is basically, like, relic-type sh- 
It's it, relic, relic type shit. Like, it is amazing. I almost balked right there, but then I realized I could say that word on my channel because it's mine. And I can say words if I want. We ate food, so let's buy some cabbages. Just fill in the gaps right there so I don't have to make this run later on. We'll go to the armor merchant and a coat of plates. That is equal to ours, but in a different color. A reinforced great helm. That'll put us up to 57. I think that's about on cue with a reinforced winged helm as well. It might be worth it. It might be worth it. It's 12 grand. I don't know. I would still run around and I would prefer to find like the best thing that we possibly can while we're out doing this already. Are we in Yalen? Did we even hit Yelkala? I think we did. Well, that doesn't leave us with a whole lot. I guess we didn't hit Deerum. We'll go check Deerum and if Deerum doesn't have something that's going to be useful for us. One of the things I love about Floris though is that there's some really, really cool armor models. There's one called a... I always buy it every single game. It's my favorite armor I've ever seen modded into Mountain Blade Warband. It's a Vagir armor, and it's got, like, plates on the front of it, but the shoulder pads are just this giant fur mantle with, like, a furry cape on it, and I buy it every single time I play the game. He's got, like, Warhammer 40k-looking chains, like, slung around your shoulders with, like, medallions and things hanging from him. It's really, really badass. I buy it every single... I forget what it's called. It's called a... Oh, I don't know. It's called, like, a Kupak or something like that. I forget what it's called, but it's the most awesome armor I have ever seen. A thick core bully is actually only on cue with what we have right now. That's disappointing. The plate mail is a little bit better, but it's crude. And so I can only assume that that allocates our cursing skill up slightly high. Did I make that joke? I always forget. Sometimes I don't check jokes off the list mentally, and then I reuse them, and I feel like a jerk. And right after, I knew it. Right after I buy gauntlets, I'm going to find better ones. Damn. Well, as of right now, we've been tremendously unsuccessful in our search for armor that is better than our own, either a thick mail version of our coat of plates, or I guess since we're at peace with Vagirs right now, we can swing up through their lands and see if they've got anything for us. Have a peeky peeky sneaky sneaky, and there we go to the armor vendor. Crude plate armor, that is in the top left corner, and so that is the best that they have to offer. Now interestingly enough, the crude version is better than anything that I have, but still. Buy some dried meat while we're here. I could buy some date fruits. I love dates. Dates are delicious. There's a date farm in California. Down whenever I work in Death Valley, there's a place called the China Ranch Date Farm out there in the middle of the desert. And I always swing through it whenever I'm down there. It's delicious. Just the stuff they make. It's just this little shack, too. It's a giant date farm with just a little house on it. And you just walk into the people's house. And they've got, like, a storefront in their house. And you just buy all the stuff related to dates that you could ever want. It's... It's pretty cool. It's one of those weird little treasures you find while traveling around that most people don't know about. But if, you ever, if you're ever down in Death Valley, look up the China Ranch Date Farm and swing through for a little bit. You won't be disappointed. Get a date shake. It'll be awesome. It'll be amazing. A reinforced core bully. At the price that's being sold for, I don't think we can justify the benefit. So basically, at 40000 we could get ourselves a thick plate of or a thick suit of plate mail which would be closer to 60 armor and probably about 20 leg armor would be pretty close the core bully does have the benefit of having I think the best leg armor in the game pretty sure it has the best leg armor in the game I may go for it just because I'm tired of riding around and I don't like the way the plate mail looks anyways let's do it I'm just gonna buy that we'll save that coat of plates for somebody else and so there goes another 40 grand so we found ourselves a little bit of, uh, it's a bunch of stuff to spend money on, but still. We should also probably look for weapons in this episode. That might not be such a terrible idea either. Seeing if we can find ourselves something a little bit better. We have a Masterwork Nomad Saber. I don't think we're going to do much better than that. With regards to a cavalry weapon. Strong Nord Bow, though. I think we should probably ride around Nord territory and see if we can get ourselves a Huskarl Shield. Let's go to Vercheg and we'll start there. That's going to be the first place we'll look. Let me also make sure that Beluga... Is reinforcing itself properly it is not okay well I haven't upgraded anybody in a long time either so we'll get our three Huskarls 14 veterans hired blade camp follower up to a huntress farmer up to a watchman and maybe wipe out some of these sea raider groups while we're here let's do it so we'll charge the enemy we'll do a little bit of combat in this episode I realize I don't always do a whole lot of combat but in this situation, we'll ride out and see what we can get done. We've got our cavalry army with us, so I don't think there's any real possibility of major losses here. This should just be an abject slaughter straight out of the gate. 
Nizar got knocked out. Nizar has the softest chin I've seen of any character ever. So down they go. I don't even know when my next level up is. Have you have you realized? I think we leveled up maybe seven or eight episodes ago, but we've gotten to the point now where level ups are like these life-changing things that never occur anymore. And so there's our victory. I do think that once we train up some Huskarls, I may train up some more Knights too. Make sure that we got a couple hundred of those. Nordic Shields in there. Let me make sure that... I think Borcha needs better armor. Oh, Behester does too. God, everybody here is looking a little bit skimp with regards to armor. I think Borcha is definitely in the spot where he needs armor the worst, so we'll give it to him. He's got Battered Mail. Yeah, we'll give him the coat of plates, make him a little bit more resilient. His weaponry is still eh, but he's our last infantryman. I think I have some boots around here too for you, pal. There you go. So now you're looking a, a bit more lordly. I may do one or two more of these just to see if we can clear some of these guys out. Let's go ahead and charge them, and any upgrades that we get will be applied to whoever needs them. I mean, I... It's difficult, I mean, even when you've got a really, really high training ability, it's tough to get people up to top tier levels like Huskarls and things like that. But then again, I think Huskarls require more XP than just about every other unit in the game, too. Receive 52 damage. Almost one-shotted me. That would have been embarrassing. I do wish. One of the features that I always wish they had in Mountain Blade Warband while we're on the subject of like mods and things like that, is I always wished that you would gain experience. So for example, let's think about it like this. You've got a menu in which as you use different units more and more and more, you get points that you can apply to those units, meaning that you become more experienced at using them, and you apply those points into making those units better, but only when under your command. So for example, if you've been using Huskarls for half the game, you would have like five or six points in Huskarls that you could use on like a talent tree, for example, to make your Huskarls run a little bit faster, make them a little bit meaner. And it would work for low tier troops too, so even your rookies would be a little bit better. Like the final tier would be like upgrades that are geared like chainmail or something like that, so even your recruits have chainmail, like wealthy peonage or something, I don't know. But anyways, I always felt like it should take a long time. Like at this point in the game, when you're like 20 hours in, you should have a couple points for some of the units that you've been really using super hardcore mode. I look at Clargy boy. Clargy boy's rocking that armor like it doesn't or that army like it doesn't even matter. So it's going to be us and Clargus versus the enemy, which means he's probably going to stink up our ranks with some of his terrible units. But I think after this battle I may break it off. We're in that peacetime lull at the moment where I'll probably ride around for a bit in between episodes, making sure that everybody's upgraded to the extent that they need to be. And then once we get to that point, I'll zone you guys back in once we've started another campaign. I think we're probably going to try and focus on Vagirs pretty heavily at this point. If I can run them out of the northern reaches, I think that'll put us in a great spot to fight with Nords. Because Nords, as of right now, is probably the only formidable army on the map that I would worry about. If they wanted to fight with us, they could, just based on the fact that they have more Lords. Like, we can't canvas as much ground as they can. Get rid of that guy right there, because he insults me by living through one of my strikes. My strikes are the holy blows of the Empress, because I am the Empress, and I imbue them as such. And so you will die, sir. Oh, there he goes. He's like, I'm on it, and he just falls over. He's like that guy in Austin Powers. Like, you don't even have a name tag, man. And they just fall over dead the second they see Mad Dog McGriddle coming. They play dead. Yeah. It'd be nice. It would save me a little bit of trouble and time. But anyways, we're going to break the episode off here. Let me see who needs to be upgraded first. How did I lose? I was at 121 before. As my company size. How did I mess that up? I've done something wrong. Oh well, we'll upgrade our sharpshooters, veterans ready to become Huskarls, warriors ready to become veterans, which is always a good thing. And from there, there's no more room for you guys. I wish I could take some of these because I do like the fact that they turn into Hired Blades and Sword Sisters because those are both units that I love. I really, really love Hired Blades, but oh well. It is what it is. I'm going to camp out at Beluga Castle right now, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody. My name is Splattercat. If you're just zoning in on, like, the 90-something episode, I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. I put these episodes out as frequently as I can. They're a little bit difficult to orchestrate at this point because there's not a lot of stuff left to do, but we are still slowly creeping our way across the map right now. As you will see, as kind of a recap, we are, we're taking big chunks right now. I think that there's a lot of map left to take. I don't know if we're going to be able to. I'll be here for... I'm starting to kind of do like a head count. It's going to take us probably another 100 episodes just to conquer the rest of this. I may cut it off after we conquer like half of it. Just showing that we can. 
and then, I don't know, maybe I'll do it by myself in my free time and then show you guys at the end and be like, look, we did it, or the final episode or something, I don't know. In any case, I will see you guys later, take care, this is Mountain Blade Warband, my name is Splattercat, hi do you guys.